Alrighty, first charge. All right, man. Well, well, well. So, what are we doing now? We're in the EV6, man. We're I-5 to El Dorado Hills. Kind of a nice little town just east of Sacramento by about 35 minutes. What are we doing? Super secret squirrel stuff. Kendall making her debut on the show-ish, kind of. Say something intelligent. <laughs> and there you go. So, um, yeah, something really cool we're picking up, man. Uh, we're gonna try a Turo out here. So, found a cool little car. We'll see if we can't, you know, at least break even on the car payment, right, Liz? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll go over that when we get her picked up and um, enjoy some of I 5. Here we go. into the Dunnigan uh, Electrify America here, trying to make it to the airport. It would have been a little bit close. The car is loaded, air conditioning going. This is 30 miles sooner, so we pulled in here. And it's about as well as to be expected with these older ABBA units, which I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Let's double check. Yeah, they're the ABB units. And uh, no, it's not great. No, these, these units are horrible. It took two different stalls, one and two. One handle's broken on this one, and she just started to ramp up. So, actually, let's see what we're charging at. Well, the communication sucks, but uh, we walk her up to 22% uh, or 222 kilowatts, uh, both in just about, yeah, about 23%. We're actually gonna adjust that slider to about 90. So we're gonna be here for just a little bit, but we'll pull that power the whole time because uh, the EV6 is just a freaking monster when it comes to charging. So we're on their plus pass, which is 42 cents. And yeah, this should go up. It's like 90%, she's gonna sit there and charge. And uh, <laughs> bathroom's in stack, so uh, we'll check it when we get it back on the road. Just about done here wrapping it up. We went to the little gas station right there. Went pee, right, you know, right in there. Came back here and we are already past uh, 80%. We were at like 122 kilowatts still, ish, 77. Let's check it out. Yeah, 81, and we're still pulling 121 kilowatts. This thing is awesome. It is truly is an awesome charging car when these are working, and we got a really pretty F-150 there. So yeah, we're gonna run up to 90%, and then we are gone. Man, we are in the, the new ride for our uh, Turo adventure. Got another Tesla. This is a 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And she's got just under 80,000 miles on her, like 79 and change. There's not a rattle on this car. There's not a squeak. I mean, this car is dead silent. Um, paid 16 grand for it. I thought I got a good deal. Uh, you can really tell a difference between my suspension, which is the team comfort coilovers, like the full way adjustables versus factory. Wow, this thing is squishy when you turn the wheel, holy smokes. But uh, yeah, we're gonna give this Turo thing a chance. And uh, I figured, I mean, worst case scenario, I can always get my money or make a buck back on the car. So 
I'm really out nothing but time at this point. So we got to get it back home. The uh, They left their information on the car so we can supercharge. If they had pulled the car from their account, I couldn't make it home because it's Friday, the DMV is closed and Tesla needs a bunch of information to actually put the car in my name so I can put it on my account. So kudos to the uh, original owners. Thank you for uh, giving me a uh, chance to get home on your dime. And uh, yeah, we'll get her all cleaned up and Monday we'll go to the DMV when uh, I wake up because I work Sunday night and we'll get everything put into our name and then we will uh, we'll see if we can at least cover the cost of ownership through Turo. So it'll be kind of adventure. We will see what happens. So we are just now leaving the Sacramento area. We're headed into Chico. We will supercharge there and uh, I'll get some good pictures of her uh, when we get to the supercharger. Fingers crossed this works, man. <laughs> see you guys at the superchargers. Alrighty, first charge. We just got into Chico. So into the service mode uh, because I want to hmm, see stuff. All right, unfortunately, this is a version two. So we are probably going to max out. We arrived here at 18%, which was pretty much projected. And yeah, that's all we're going to pull. And we are still cruising just under 400 amps. Yeah, 375 amps. Yeah, we're we're right where the car wants to be on a V2. So we'll be here for a little bit. Um, we're going to just charge up as much as we can. We don't really need to, but I have to go into Target to find Hot Wheels. So yeah, so far so good. I mean, it's been, we did 100 miles in the car. Big deal. We got, I think, 70 more to go. But yeah, this thing is as quiet as it can be, man. I am I'm very pleased with uh, the purchase so far. <sighs> Just got to make sure we can keep it rented on Turo. So I think we got a really good shot at it. And um, got to get some tint on these windows. And boy, you can tell cars that have it and cars that don't, man. It's, it's crazy. So we're going to go run right into Target, try and find some Hot Wheels, grab something to snack on and a drink. And we're just going to let the car cruise away. And yeah, we're yeah, sitting at 137 and we'll be here for a minute. See you guys on the ride. Alrighty. So it's uh, been about a week later. I uh, got back just in time to go to work for the previous four days and then decompress and we'll finish this video up. So 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Uh, everything checks out with the car pretty well. Um, let's go over it and I'll show you a few things. So the previous owner, very nice couple uh, that probably didn't really care much about, you know, curbing wheels because every single wheel has been uh, has been wrecked on pretty good. And this is actually probably one of the better ones. Um, the hubcaps around the wheels are they look great. I pulled those off and no kidding. It was that thick of just schmutz in there. Cleaned all that off. Um, I have another set of brand new wheels in the back, but I'm debating on just doing tires now or waiting. We'll see. Of course, I have my Starman sticker on the car. Interior looks actually pretty good. Uh, I found they did not have floor mats, but a guy on Craigslist here had a set of brand new um, all weathers for 60 bucks. So we jumped on that. The car is fully in my name now, so supercharging has all been restored, and she's just sitting at 50%. I probably will do a full 100% run up tonight, just to let the BMS calibrate. Um, but we do have an error, and I'll show you what that is. So I'm sure most of you know, go into software, hold the Model 3 for just a few seconds, and then S-E-R-V-I-C-E, -E, okay, and yes. And you'll come into the service screen. All right, and then from the service screen, let's see here, service alerts. And we do have an A271, that one's new, the 158. Basically, what we have is uh, the HVAC system is not nominal, a THSS sensor fault, and all that means <laughs> is actually quite simple. So if we go into the air conditioning, 
Uh, sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. But there's an error that says keep commands not available or, or something like that. I can't turn the um, HVAC on from the phone and dog mode, keep mode, none of those work. So there's a $75 sensor that needs to be replaced that I already have a service appointment set up for. So I say $75, that's what the estimate shows that came through on the app. It's probably pretty accurate. Tesla's pretty good with that stuff. So September 13th, we have a uh, appointment down in Chico, which is you know 60 miles down range. They'll get that all squared away. All these open uh, errors will go away at that point. I am going to do a thermals test here. Um, shout out to Out of Spec, also wearing their shirt. Uh, Timon just got a new car, Model 3, 19 Performance, and they were doing the um, the thermals test on it. I forgot you could do that in the service mode. So we're going to do it this. Okay, just so for here we go. We're going to run the HVAC performance test. So again, you just get into um, the service mode, go into the snowflake, well here we'll just do it, and then get into actions. And then this is where you know you can really screw some stuff up. However, we can test the HVAC and then the thermals. That's what we're gonna do. So we have to unlock everything. So hold the right turn indicator in the active and press on the brake for eight seconds. So. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I might be counting my seconds a little bit fast. Oh yeah, you can't half press it. You gotta put the turn indicator all the way up. Somewhere in there, there it is. Good to go. Okay, let's try the, other one. the thermals check has passed as well. So that's good to go. So we can just go ahead and close out of that. There's nothing else under um, under this to, to check out. That's all we really need. Um, connectivity software, all that great stuff that you're normally gonna see. There's all your charging gear, power distribution, everything from the low voltage battery, all that is just fine. So yeah, the, the two biggest things, you know, the, the the thermals, the coolant, all that works really good. We just need to get that sensor replaced so it'll work uh, on dog mode and key mode. Not that I I will ever use those, most likely, but again, I am very dog friendly with Turo. I even have a, a, a pet blanket to put over the rears. I want you to take your dog. If you guys are going on vacation, use the car. So dog mode needs to work. So that's why we'll take One care thing of it. That my tent shop did do which i absolutely despise is this and had i known he was going to do this prior i wouldn't have done it but the tent stops here just above the rear defroster and the top portion is already pretty dark from the factory but if you get in the car you can blatantly notice it and i absolutely hate that with a passion roxy was done proper because she went to a proper tent shop this one, not so much, and you can see the line right about there where he stopped. So we're gonna have a little conversation on Monday. I don't care if I have to pay a little extra, but that just looks like garbage. I guess the older, or you know, the first run where they had the rainbow glass on them, there was, um, I don't know if it was a bulletin or people, oh, if you tint it, heat can build up and they'll crack. First of all, I highly doubt that. Uh, I think Tesla said that just to say it. Um, but this is not the rainbow glass. That tent should have gone all the way up. This is half-assed at best. And uh, yeah, I am not happy with it. I didn't even notice it until I got home yesterday because of how my seat sits in the car. So I go to get up out of the driver's seat and whoa, what in the hell was that? So, you gotta be kidding me. So that's when I call it, oh yeah, I do a half-assed job because I'm lazy. Oh, well, we'll have words on Monday. We'll, I mean, he very well told me he could go pound sand at that rate, then that's probably what we're gonna do. The car is going on Turo. That's why we bought it, but I'm still, let's do it right guys. Cause I will still drive this car. Um, and I don't like it half-assed moving on. No power lift gate, the stuff you miss, but yeah, totally clean and cool inside here. I'm not sure how well you can see is it's, you know, just a big old black cavernous trunk. Already got our NorCal Reno sticker going on it. But yeah, there's some, you know, a couple of little scratches on it. It's a 2019. I mean, the car is five years old. The rest of it's in pretty 
damn good shape. There's no like major dings and dents, you know, a couple shopping cart scuffs, which I could probably get that out with some rubbing compound. But the body itself is straight as an arrow. There was another scratch. Oh yeah, this is a, that's a pretty good one right there. And clearly a pretty nice door ding. But the rest of the car, I am extremely happy with. There was no real issues on it. Uh, they did leave it under a tree when parked. So you can imagine how much tree sap was on there. It took a couple hours with some clay bar to get it all cleaned up. Uh, but now <laughs> she feels nice and smooth again. So a couple other things I want to do to it. Every car I've ever had, I've had the fender stripes. So we'll get my wrap guy on that. We'll just put a couple stripes on the fender. Just enough to kind of make it my own. I'm working with somebody right now. Hopefully get a set of some pretty cool um, <laughs> hubcaps, I guess. Uh, they, they're kind of, they're pretty cool. Uh, Tesla FPV has the same ones. I saw his and went, hey, those are cool. So reached out to the company. We'll see what they say. This, you know, the, the last reply I got was, well, which colors do you want? We'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, 50 kilowatt battery, uh, 55, I believe, uh, factory. And then it is, you know, there's, there's a buffer plus whatever degradation there is. That's why we're going to do the 100% uh, run up tonight. Maybe I'll even do it today, then just go drive it. Um, just kind of gauge where it's at, let the BMS calibrate. Who knows the last time this thing was actually charged to 100%. So we'll play with that. Um, yeah, she's live on Turo right now. So hopefully we get some uh, interest in it. But God, you can see that where the tent line is right there. That's so annoying to look at. God, that just irks me so bad. But yeah, for the price. I think I did pretty good. Um, 300 bucks into the tent and 60 bucks in the floor mats. I'm sure there's a couple little more odds and ends I'll do on it. But yeah, I the next thing will be tires and uh, I've already got two brand new Nokians. So I only need to order two more, so that's good. So yeah, we'll get her uh, rented out soon, hopefully, and we'll see what happens. So thanks for hanging out with this one, guys. We'll see you again.